I love to see a conversation with Josh kind of video. When did he start playing? What's his favorite bass? What genres is he into? First gig stories, funny gig stories, etc. So the reason why I started playing was because I was I was really big into basketball and then I was trying out for my high school team and I sprained my ankle. And I was gonna make the tryouts if I would've made it back to the place, but unfortunately I didn't think they were gonna take me because I had sprained ankle. So I didn't go, which I made it, which that sucked. So I didn't know what to do because I said, fuck sports at that point. And then I picked up bass because there was nothing else I could really do. And so I played for like six hours straight, Enter Sandman, it's all I knew. Just the da -na 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 -na, over and over for six hours. Played it backwards, didn't make sense, I still did it. Just say this is just to know that I, I knew it. And then I showed my friend, which got me into bass, and that's pretty much how I just started getting the love for bass, because I was like, wow, this is this is pretty good. Even though I suck, generally it's you get what you put into it. So eventually I I, I got it pretty good. <laughs> metal was my number one genre that I loved. So I was into new metal at the time, and then I got into older stuff like Metallica and Iron Maiden later on. And then my, I was a pick player at first, and that was because I loved Offspring and all that as well, like mainly a lot of uh, uh, post-punk stuff. But then I learned Iron Maiden, and Steve Harris just blew my mind, and then I got into Rush, and then that just took on from a whole different perspective. My first band was named Ammunition, and it was a thrash metal band, strictly just, you know, just early thrash. And, we, I was in that band for about a year and a half, and probably the biggest thing I would say that we opened up for this big band would be Metal Church. That was a big deal. And then I got into another band uh, that was called Reincarnated, and they're more of like, like your Alice in Chains type deal, and that was that was fun. That we we played the biggest thing that I remember in that we played for UFO, and that was really cool at the uh, at the uh, Key Club. And then I got into my death metal band, which was in 2009 to 2011. opened up for Rat, which was really random. Death Metal Band opening up for Rat, that was that was strange, but it was very fun. Um, and then I stopped at 2012 because the band broke up and I was actually gonna quit, but I got into another band again about a year and a half later. And then uh, that was uh, King's Revenge. <laughs> from 2012 to about 2022, I would say 2020 because, you know, COVID kind of fucked everything up. So now, I ain't doing a damn thing but the bass channel, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so about three years ago, we played in uh, Sacramento and Chris went with us for this one because he was supposed to be uh, recording us live so he gets some plug-in uh, tones and so forth for, uh, for the bass channel, but, other things went wrong as normal, I guess. Uh, it was a six hour drive and we we're gonna drive six hours back the same day. So we got there in the at night and in the morning when we got there, um, we were supposed to be playing later on around two or three when it came out to be, we were playing at 11 o'clock in the morning. So we set everything up to uh, record and everything and to play live, but um, the first note I played playing just a, a low, I think it was a D sharp or whatever. Boom, a freaking explosion, and the next thing you know, all the power's out. So we're like, okay, they're gonna get the power back on. So they get the power back on. Do it again, intro for, uh, um, wow, I forgot what song it was. It was Black Disguise. And I come in again, and then bam, explosion. Same shit happens again. 
This happens five fucking times. And we waited and we waited and they couldn't figure out the problem. And then finally when they did, they had to cut it short. We only got to play two songs to drive six hours. So that was definitely the worst case. And then Chris got to stand there and videotape the whole thing, which I'm sure he could either show you or not, depending on his situation, if he wants to. So the, my favorite bass right now, probably forever, will be the TA500. My dad bought me that when I first started. It was actually my second bass, but I call it my first bass. But I got the TA500 at an American Music here in Ventura, and my dad wanted it because on the very top, I was like, that's the one right there. So I said, okay, cool. So they bought it for me, and then so that's been a sentimental value forever. But playability and everything that I own right now, hands down, will have to be the Getty Lee Jazz bass. Every time I pick it up, I'm just like, it's so thin, the neck plays fast, the tone of the pickups to everything in it, it's just, it's what you want. And no matter if you're playing metal, rock, jazz, whatever it is, it's, just, it's got the tone. But the ding wall is great for metal. I love that low B. There's nothing that can really honestly touch that low B, especially when you're playing super heavy things. But um, with the distortion built onto it, it just gives it that punch. My dream bass would be um, probably a Warwick Vampire bass, but it'd be a, either a custom or a, you know a German-made Mastercraft one. Never got to play one, so I can't say that they're the best thing on earth or not. I just love the look out of them, and I love the uh, probably the lowest grade quality one. I like that one, so if I thought that one was good, I definitely think the Master was going to be good. So someday, don't know when, maybe soon. <laughs> but maybe I can get one and uh, we'll be able to put it on the channel. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs>